Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. And this is a special for me reaching 3,800 subscribers. Why not 4,000? Well, you see, that number holds a very important thing to me, because that is the number that the old Reddit channel has. Uh, I believe their number is around 3,700-something subscribers, so I am now have more subscribers than the thing that I originally came from, which is also where Zen came from. It so, sure is. It sure is. So today we're going to do an actual revisit of old Modcast episode one. <laughs> <laughs> the literal start for both of us. <clears throat> so before then, let's uh, talk about a little bit of history thing. If you don't know, me and Zen got our starts with Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the old lore. Yes, the old lore where we were both at one point Reddit mods for it. Uh, Zen was there first and then I came at a later wave. Uh, just to set up the scene, do you remember how you got into Dokkan back in the day? Uh, I think it was literally just seeing an ad for it and being like, ooh, Dragon Ball. Mm -hmm. And it was during <laughs> the very early days when it just released on Global. Yeah, yeah, Global like literally had just... It, it was when like the only SSRs you could get were the ones that were in the launch pool. Mm -hmm. I remember my first banner that I summoned on was actually the Piccolo and Gohan one. The physical Piccolo and the intelligence Gohan. And the Gohan. intelligent Gohan, yeah. yeah. That was my first banner. Um, I actually heard from mine from back in when I was watching during Giant Bomb. There was a, a Beast cast, and one of the people inside there talked about there being a new mobile game with Dragon Ball characters in it. And I was like, I like Dragon Ball, in theory. So let me go. By this point, I had been like one of those lapsed Dragon Ball fans, but then I just watched Battle of Gods. And I was like, maybe there's still something more here, man. I don't know. That was a very good movie. So I was in, <laughs> so I was already like, all right, let me give this a shot. And then from there, I just randomly found the Reddit. I made my Reddit account for Dokkan. And it currently, I don't have many comments on it. They're all from specifically that era uh, of time. Uh, do you even remember when the early days started? Because we, when we were there, it was like the very early like Reddit mod stuff. Like at this point, no one, no one from that time exists on the sub now anymore. I doubt any one of them do. Oh um, yeah, I, I strongly doubt it. Yeah. Um, I want to say that you were maybe like third wave and then I was fourth wave because you would already join the team by the time I did. I was like on the same batch as, I think it was me, Penta, and Laughing Man is when we were joined in for it. And I was joined in there because I was eventually acknowledged because I just did nothing but spend time in the question and answers a thread. And I answered every single question. Absolutely. I do remember that was your job for a long time, yeah. And it wasn't even really my job to begin with. I just started doing that. <laughs> and I think it was Vio put me aside. It's like, hey, good job, man. Do you want like a title? I was like, oh, that <laughs> that's would be... all you do. Yeah, that literally it was like, we want to acknowledge all the helpful things you do on the sub. And we notice you literally reply to everyone and answer everyone's question. I was like, yeah, sure. Uh, I remember the, the reason that I got my mod position was to do public relations. That's hilarious. That is, you are not to say any, because you were pretty all right at public relations, but just the idea of how angry you get at people, the idea that you are the best option to be there for public relations. Oh, yeah. Yeah, is, it was it was bad. Well, because people, there was a, a period there, especially the beginning, where people would be like, hey, I like just in the most, like, not even really that critical manner, just be like, hey. Um, I think this part of the sub is kind of bad. I think maybe we could, like, you know, remodel it to this. And then the, the admin guy would be like, hey, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right, all right, this is not working out. No. This is not working out. And this is something he would do up until finally he was left from the sub, which is that Fishman, everything would be going fine. And then all of a sudden, Fishman would look at the sub and be like, oh, fuck you. And then kick ban someone. And it would be like, oh, why did you do that? <laughs> yeah, there was no reason. Everyone had everyone had it all under control until right now, and now it's out of control. Yes, yeah, so we 100% did need a PR man, but it just goes to show how bad the PR was that you were like seen as like a no. This guy will he'll he'll drive us right, and you were very good at that job. I'll say. Um, so that is the setup. We are now mods on here. And do you remember why you wanted to start a channel for the sub? Because I want to say back then. The only real people who were making, like, Dokkan videos were, like, 
Rhyme, Defree, and Living Ichigo, with the biggest one being Living Ichigo or Rhyme, I want to say. But Rhyme was uh, definitely more well, of a, like, in general. Li- general yeah, Living Ichigo was probably the big, at the time anyway, was yeah. probably the biggest one that was Dokkan specific. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, obviously, Dino's huge, but he's like a general yeah. Dragon Ball. Like, not even just Dragon Ball, like Yu Gi Oh! Pokemon, just like a general content guy. Yeah, he, he's always been um, that. Yeah. Yeah. And now, I mean, Nano is fucking giant now, but he yeah. wasn't, like, in the game too much back then, I don't believe. No, he would he would eventually shown up in the modcast, but it was a little while ago later. Yeah, a while down the a while down yeah. the line, yeah. I, I remember Deefy was an early guest, and I think Rhyme is, like, episode three, maybe. It was really early on. We never got Living Ichigo on there because, unfortunately, we had a lot of not actual beef, but it was more like fake d- drama on the sub. It because... was it was super weird, yeah, because, like, he... Remember back when you could somehow, like, steal someone's Dokkan account by yep. just knowing their ID? Yep. Like, if you just gave their ID to the staff, they'd be like, okay, here you go. Yeah, they would just give accounts, yes. Yeah, give it to you. Um, well, uh, apparently, like, someone told him that, that the Reddit did that. Yes. And he was like, fuckers, where's my stuff? And we're like, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about, dude. Yes, and I remember it, that. It was crazy. Yeah, and that was the reason why for it a lot. And um, that would last for a while until eventually we realized it had gone on so long. It's like, why are we doing this? It doesn't make... <laughs> Excuse me? It doesn't make any sense. Like, we don't even really remember the reason why we're fighting, and you're not even into Dokkan anymore, and at some point, the people on the Reddit, because of course it's a Reddit, people took it too far, and it was like, you should not be, say something based on what he said, not based off what he does. It was it was getting really bad. It got really bad. But that's the reason why Living Ichigo was never on the modcast, and also why, if you mm-hmm. listen back to the modcast, there's a lot of, like, what feels like random strays at Living Ichigo. Yeah, yeah, he catches a lot of, he catches a lot of fucking stray bullets in that yeah which i could say now sorry dude it was a weird time <laughs> i don't feel that way anymore um but yeah that is the setup here do you remember why you wanted to specifically make the channel um back then because you are the person who made that reddit channel yeah, back in the i day. was the i was the the origin well because we had that line chat which like we might have been the only people on earth who used line yes um, me and another friend yeah uh for the for the all the moderators and i i don't remember why i pitched the idea but i do remember recruiting you very early on for it yeah i and i remember you also made a video do you remember that video where you made where it was like an introduction featuring a bunch of dragon ball clips of all the mods and you left out me and hope (laughs) So I do remember that, yeah. Yeah, because the second video is of me saying, like, the forgotten mod. So the first video is you talking about introducing the mod team, and the second video is, here's the mods Zen forgot. Yep, I do remember that. That is That was a funny time. It was a, a great old time. So yeah, first modcast... I remember when you said, like, who wants to be on this? And I said, I'll do it. And then we could not get another... They were too nervous. It was We were not a bunch of dudes who were like, we, we're we here to moderate a Reddit. We're not here to actually do videos of us. And it's extremely scary to go up and actually, like, put yourself out there like that. Um, but eventually we got Penta. Uh, Penta agreed to do it. And so this is the start of Modcast Episode 1. That is all the backstory. So here's the beginning part of it. Here it is. All right, I'm pausing here because I actually made this. <laughs> yeah, which was it's awesome. I love this little animation. Yeah, it was a. Uh, um, I'm I'm not the greatest in terms of skills, but I took the original Dragon Ball, um, one of the inserts, I believe, was what they were called, uh, and made this myself. Like animated it. It was just me. I did all the little drawing things. I put the little Reddit Goku thing here. I did the Oolong thing. Um, and I put it together, and I was actually very happy with how it came out, because I was like, listen, for one guy doing this in a very short notice, very happy with what I did. Yeah, I, I think it's great. This was one of my favorite parts of the show. Yeah. The one thing I'll say is, as a negative towards me, is that, um... Oh, wait, 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 wait one moment. Let me pause real quick. 
and go, okay, we're back. It's now capturing it officially. So now you can see here. So yeah, I made all this, did all thing. The one thing that's annoying is that the loud sound that you hear at the beginning, I made it too loud. <laughs> So every time we went to every time I went to go edit this later, I had to put it down lower because I forgot how unbelievably fucking loud it's I said it to super be. Super loud. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely like, oh my god, it woke you the hell up when you heard it. So that was a, a fun little bit here. Okay, let's go in right here and hear the beginning of it right here. Hey, who wants to make up a, a an intro on the spot? Uh, hello and welcome to the modcast. We've got Zenrot here. That's, how you, I, that's actually how you say the name, right? That is how you say the name. Zenrot. We got Doctor Pentagrammer. Hey, and I'm Purple Wokey. I actually don't know how to say my own name. <laughs> <laughs> we dolphin noise every curse word. That's right. Do you remember what started the dolphin noise? Uh, it was, wasn't it a Living Ichigo thing? It was! It was a reference to Living Ichigo. It was actually, um, it wasn't him who said it. It was the other dude, B. Sa Saving the Bees, is that what he's called nowadays? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yes, he was, he was friends with Ichigo, and during one of the many times where they were talking about something, they said, whatever, we're just gonna put a dolphin sensor over that and we'll be fine. And it was such a weird thing that it caught everyone in the in the group chat that we had. We started using dolphin noises as censor. So the, in the beginning episodes of the modcast, all swearing is censored by that dolphin noise. And eventually we stopped because, oh my god, that took so much time and effort. Um, so here at the beginning here, you can see that our amazing way of opening videos has not changed. In eight years since this video's mm -hmm. released, yep. we have not changed the way that we introduce videos at all. Um, also, you can see here that this is also, I say your name's Zenrot, and we don't go with Zenrado, because that is your actual Yeah, form. that, that uh, hasn't, that, that actually came later. Did it come later? It did come later. That came after I got uh, closer with um, Rhyme Style. Oh, really? And he was like, you should go with this because it's got dragon ball connotations to it so it's really good branding so you i was like because right. it because it's just goku's japanese name and and but be, it's it's zen in front instead of the, and, the carrot and to be fair to to Ryan, i think he was kind of right because a lot of people still say zenrado for it uh and a lot of it has to do with the fact that nano eventually took your name and said zenrado yep. look but nano, nano made my name public domain <laughs> For a while. He sure did, and that makes it also very annoying for me when I go to go at, and there's multiple Zenrods and multiple uh -huh. Zenrados. Um, but, okay, so that was before then. That's funny. This is also back when I still had purple in front of Wokey. Um, I, don't ha I, don't, I don't introduce myself as purple Wokey most of the time now. I just go Wokey because it's simpler for that. Um, as I've said, many people have asked me over the years, why is it purple in front of it? It's because originally Wokey was taken when I went to go do another name for it. <laughs> I think when it was when I went to go make the Reddit account, it was like Wokey was taken, so I put purple in front of it. And they're like, is it because you love the color purple? And it's like, no. It's because of a character from a game called... Uh, um, purple. T it's from a character called Purple Tentacle. And there was another character in there called Green Tentacle. So that's why there's purple in front of my name. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Pe and Dr. Pentagrammer, this is the last time I'll ever call him Pentagrammer in his full name. Because from this point on, I think I just say Penta. <laughs> yep. Uh, Penta, who is uh, not here with us because he has thankfully gone away from the internet. And uh, I think he lives in... Is it... Is it I, I keep forgetting it. Is it Finland? No, right? Uh, no, I think it is, right? It is. Um, Someone was Finland. Maybe if it wasn't him, it was. It was likely him. He was. He was from Finland. Um, he's not around as much anymore, but he's still like he just avoids like the the annoying sites like Twitter, <laughs> and he isn't a part of Dokkan anymore. But he is an important member. He is the third one, and we can also say here based off of this art, this art was of our three characters that we use as flares on the site. <laughs> Didn't. We at one point say he got killed rescuing Renzi from jail. Yes, uh, effect effectively, <laughs> Penta was dead. 
in the extended in, in in modcast lore yeah he died yes in modcast lore he would eventually die that is the season finale the season two finale of the modcast where uh common was also killed for no reason and valley lost an arm <laughs> It was a uh, it was a hell of an adventure to go on. Yeah, uh, but we can see here yours is um, Goku Black, mine is Gine, and uh, Penta is Hit. And this art was also made by. Um, does she want to say that she's always said that she's made this art, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I I forget how to pronounce it. Can you say it for me? Because <laughs> I'm afraid of saying uh, the name wrong. I don't remember what. How the handle goes, goes? By on Twitter now. Bobby. Ba- oh, ba- Babby, Babby Mammoth. There we go. Babby Mammoth made this for us, and would also eventually make the one that was inspired by JoJo's Part Four's um, ending theme, I believe. That yes, the the Great Days. Yes, which is a I love that art. I still use. I still look at it. I still have it on me and everything. Um, it's great stuff, and I always like this art. I always felt bad that I I never wanted to tell her like, hey, can you draw an Aureli hat over my character? So eventually, after Aureli comes out, if most people who remember the modcast remember, my character has an Aureli hat. I Photoshop that in <laughs> uh-huh. and put it in there <laughs> because I didn't want to ask her, can you redraw this for me? Because I was like, no, that's for someone who did this for us for free. I'm not gonna bother them and say, hey, can you put a hat on me? And my entire character changed overnight. <laughs> can you do that for us? <laughs> So yeah, here's the beginning of us. And this is also the first time we ever talk to each other, which I think shows as the show yeah, goes but, on. Uh, well, not not like in general, but uh, vocally. Yes, yes. In, vo- in, vocal, in vocal times. So we'll see. Play again. <laughs> <laughs> I think it just... Walk, walk, it's Wokey. Just call me Wokey. That's how, I've always, that's how I've always said it. I've always called you Wokey when, when saying your name. So <laughs> Do you say that often? <laughs> Almost never, but I, I read it back in my head, and I just assume it's Wokey. Yeah, it's Wokey. Because the wrong way of saying it would be Wokey. But yeah, we're here with the modcast, talking to you, talking to you about uh, DBZ Dokkan Battle. Excellent. Right, so, Go ahead, boss. Intro. You start from there. Alright, let's, let's jump in first. Uh, when did you guys start playing the game? We have not gotten Lobo any better came at this. Out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was right around the time the Piccolo int, uh, and Int and Teen Gohan banner. See, look at that. I remembered. <laughs> I remembered when I started. <laughs> Another thing that I should mention here is that when this originally came out, it was mono. So you could only hear me in the left ear and you could only hear Penta and you in the right ear. <laughs> And the first episode of the podcast is forever like that, and I don't know how anyone ever stuck with us after that first episode. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But we got we got better in terms of the editing, at least. I think the second episode isn't like that, so the version that you hear here, I specifically went in and cha- made a lot of these changes. So I got both of them back-to-back, and I started playing around that time. How about you, Penta? Uh, I started when Global had uh, Intelligent Cell and Strength in Gohan. Strength I started Gohan. around then. I, I actually started Global. the exact same time that Wokey did, but I did not get Gohan and Piccolo back to back. Believe it or not. Uh, I got Super Saiyan Goku, and that was it, and I was fine with that. Those were my only two units until I went to Japan. Those, and that was a couple months later, so... Do you remember the time of before knowing JP was actually a legitimate thing? Oh yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. It was a uh, It's weird to think about just because at this point I've been on JP for so long, but when I started, I actually was on Global. Um, yeah. I, 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 like all of us were basically. Yeah, it wasn't until we learned later that when we started getting more into the game, we learned that there was a JP version of the game, and then we started to convince ourselves that it had naturally better rates because it was in Japan. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> we just thought it yeah, did. I, I, yeah, I don't know where that that whole thing... I think, well... That was back before they had to be... Because I, I think this was such olden time that they didn't have to actually post the numbers, right? No, that's right. They didn't. Eventually, they, yeah. they did have to start because... They were some... forced to start posting the numbers. So people were just, like, headcanoning it with their feels... You know? Yeah, exactly. Man, what a what a different fucking time. 
Uh, I also miss Penta's accent. I uh, hearing it again is making me go like, oh yeah, I remember when we would do a lot of podcasts like when he wasn't on the show, <laughs> and we would uh-huh. immediately start trying to replicate it. Uh, to you on here. Oh. Yeah, I actually started in global as well, and then I switched over to Japan when I got tired of not getting things that I wanted. <laughs> yeah, that's basically kind of why I switched to. I did eventually get uh, what is it, Fruits of Training, Super Saiyan 2 Goku, but by that point I had already given up on Global. There's only so many times you can use that that Piccolo and go on before you get really sad. Yeah, that's, that's understandable. Bojack was the breaking point. It's when I looked at the 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 the, 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 the physical. Use your fucking words. Physical Gohan, the free one, and he was better than mine. And I just, <laughs> I just quit. I was so angry. Remember when he was the best card in the game because nobody had any Super Saiyans and everyone really, really wanted one? So that was all yeah. anyone cared about was when he came out? Yeah. I remember early days of Dokkan where it was, <laughs> fuck me. Bless you. <laughs> Dokkan could fellow I was going to talk shit about it. When you could run an SR on your team... First and no... the Bloodline, now Bandai. <laughs> exactly, the Bloodline came after me, and now uh, they're coming after me for saying this. But there was a time where, Bo- where not Bojack, but Bardock was considered extremely good because he had both the Super Saiyan Link and I think he had prepared for battle. Yep. Or, or mm-hmm. ready for war, as we called it, on the Japanese side of it. Um, because it was two different um, combinations of things. Remember when it was broken to run Super Saiyan God with Kaioken because they had all those key links together? Yes, I do remember that. Back when yeah. there was like no. Back real... when it mattered? Yeah. Yeah, back when your best lead was literally Super Saiyan God Goku because he gave 25% attack to people. And that, and that was like your best bet of like being able uh-huh. to kill something quickly. I do remember that. Then it all changed uh, when. A... Gogeta eventually came out, but the, to be fair, Broly came out, and then like, it was like, okay, so you run him if you're running red, then, and then, uh, and then it seems, oh man, the original release because this has not happened on global, but I think this is the way it went. It went Broly, uh, Cell, um, Kid Buu, and then Gogeta to completely invalidate the last two, like for for you to play Frieza, uh, for you to play. Uh, Full Power Frieza and Gohan came after Gogeta released, and it was like, why would you ever go for these? Like, they're not the dudes you want to be for. You want to run Gogeta. Why would you want them other than to have them in your team? They don't actually have the links. That was such a weird era where it was like, Gogeta or bust. It was, yeah. The the the, the ra- once the Rainbow Meta started with Gogeta, and that was the only thing you ran because it was the only thing that was really valid for anything. Um. Even if you were running a full, like, int team, you would still want to have double Gogeta, because Gogeta could um, have type advantage over anyone. So you always just ran Gogeta. It is maybe, if you look at the history of all gacha games, one of the craziest releases ever. It almost, I want to say, until they brought out uh, Super Vegito, or not Super Vegito, yes, Super Saiyan Vegito, um... It almost is the closest thing to killing a game because literally there was no reason to run any other leader but one dude for a very mm-hmm. long time, for like six months, I want to say. Um, so yeah, let's continue on here. Yeah, basically. He still is kind of considered one, I think. Well, for most people. He's still a free Super Saiyan. Yeah, he's still okay-ish, sort of. Just wait till we get that uh, updated version where he becomes an SSR and just completely blows all the other ones out of the water again. They did eventually release a Super Saiyan Bardock that was better, but did not blow out everyone from the water. <laughs> no, no, no. Also, why did we record this in a wind tunnel? So that was my mic. I was recording with a rock band mic. <laughs> That's why when I hear this back, I'm like, fuck, I know why it's like this. It's because my mic was terrible. And I was recording it off of a rock band mic. Like, I had my one hand, my my headphones in, and the other was the rock band mic. So that's why it sounded like shit so much in the early modcast days. And eventually I got a, a better mic. Um, because if you remember during the early days, I would also do a lot of... And then eventually I got a comment saying, was like, is someone fucking breathing into the mic? <laughs> and then I was like, oh no. 
it was me. I was a mouth breather, <laughs> and I've gotten better with it, I think, over time. But that's why, if you hear the rumbling, it's my fault. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that's not going to happen, but we'll see. I'm still waiting for my Super Vegeta Rebirth. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to happen. Well, this eventually happened like four years later. <laughs> I remember uh-huh. when I remember when it happened because he was like, put the, he had quit Dokkan by then, and he was like, tell everyone in the episode <laughs> that I was right. <laughs> and he did my legacy. And my legacy. And it was funny because they actually did make him really good when they eventually did give it to him. So I was like, all right, Penta was right. What you they would think it would happen, but he didn't even get in the vote, so no one else even wants it. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna totally just Xeno trunks him, and they're gonna give him an AOE. All bad cards. Immense. Are, all bad. Immense yeah, AOE man. final flash. All bad cards are just gonna get AOE tech. So yeah, back back in the day, Xeno trunks actually in his first essay did not have an AOE, and then afterwards they gave him one. Because at that point they said, hey, at least it's better than nothing. I remember this happened to Majin Vegeta as well. The the tech one. Where the tech one was not an AOE, and then when they gave him his rebirth, then he became an AOE, and then we started to compare him to Broly, and we started to look at frame data, because we were like, well, Broly's stronger, but he's really slow, and the world tournament is 80 wins, so therefore you would want to use Xeno Trunks or Majin Vegeta over Broly. Mm-hmm. Do you remember those 100 win? Like, I think by the time we joined it, it was 80 wins, but those 80 wins world tournaments... Yeah, where you had to do it, like, constantly. Yeah, it was, uh... And it wasn't, like, the, the multiplier set that we have now... Na- that they have now. It was literally... I remember, like, I stood up one night to do it all, and I was, like, non-stop grinding. It was miserable. I hated it every second of it. And it's better now, but I still think it's miserable, but for a completely different reason. <laughs> but, man. Uh, Super Boo, AoE. Does, does <laughs> it make sense, though. That one he should be, have an AoE. He should have an AoE. It would be really funny, though, if they kept the same uh, special attack, though. So the one that has the one that attacks all only attacks one, and the one that only ever <laughs> attacked one person gets the attack That's all. That's the stupidest animation, by the way. He shoots all that shit up in the air, and it, like, circles around the entire planet, and then it just hits one guy. <laughs> all of them just hits one dude. You were spitting back just then. Just off-screen is, like, TN dodging every single thing. <laughs> Hey, it's not that we got that very valuable discussion out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> this was maybe one of my favorite early bits of here, uh, is you completely undercutting what we just talked about so we can talk about something actually related to Joke <laughs> Uh Perfect. Lovely. Valuable discussions about old cars that people definitely still want to hear. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's jump into let's do for the first episode. Let's just do a little a little state of the game kind of thing. We'll do it with some recent complaints from Global and some recent from the Japanese version. We'll start with Global. Uh, how do you guys feel about the Gogeta air quotes rate cuts? Don't care. I don't play Global. The greatest theme that ever come out. The episode one, and this is what everyone was quoting. Doctor Penta's. I don't care about Global. <laughs> <laughs> It was genuinely... It, the funny thing is is that I feel like that still is a good MO for today, even though they have now the ability to... It's better now in Global, but back then it was definitely like, if you're playing Global, you're playing the lesser version of the game. <laughs> where now, yeah. I, where yeah. now I feel like Global is probably not a lesser version of the game, but now, in general, Dokkan is a lesser game. So, <laughs> you're, it's like yeah, we're both Yeah, playing trapped. Dokkan at all is, is the problem now. <laughs> Exactly. Shout out to anyone still playing Dokkan out there. If you can't tell, both me and Zen escaped. <laughs> Does it continue on? Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. So, so let's say that you did yeah. for, a, for a hot minute there. And uh, Gogeta comes out with, what was he? He was 7.5 to 8% in global, right? Yes. It was somewhere around there? Yeah. Around the same... And he was... As every other banner, kind of. Right, and he was about 12% in Japan, right? That was fucking insane. Do you remember when Gogeta actually came out to these, like, lowered rate stuff? It was... Yeah, well, I remember the the freakout, but I don't know that we ever verified if that actually happened or not. 
they eventually had to release the the statements of it because I want to say it was Laughing Man was the one who realized it because he used to run the the Dokkan. Oh right, he did like the simulator for like days. Yes, yeah. where it was like nonstop running of accounts and doing stuff like that. So he eventually realized, wait a minute. Why are the rates lowered for Gogeta? And then that's when this came out and he brought that out and it was like, whoa, what the fuck? Because now I think we're going to get talking about into it in a bit here. But the conspiracy theory was because Global can wait, what they decided to do was instead of getting the game caught up is that we now know that everyone is waiting for Gogeta. So they on purpose gutted the rates of Gogeta to make it so all the people who were saving their stones for Gogeta couldn't get Gogeta even unless they spent more. Um, that was the idea behind it. And I remember definitely being like, whoa, that's fucking insane. That If that's actually what they're doing on the global side. Obviously, they never acknowledged it, but I want to say eventually um, the rates did improve over time hear more about it i'm now curious to how much of it was going on here i i believe so but that was back when we were just early goings for those kind of ssr rates right that was like the only one that laughing man ever did for japan at the time was uh the anniversary i think it came out to about 12 percent. yeah so do you think that 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 was something that was shady or do you think that as a global player you should not expect to get Japanese rates. I'll let Penta go first. <laughs> it's a little shady, but people had been saving up for months, months, and Japanese players hadn't. So global players had a lot more stones to use on Gojira. So, eh. <laughs> I forgot how eh. much. Penta was definitely like, a, hey, fuck Global. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, I don't give a shit about Global. But, but he kind of has a point in the sense of, like, um, Gogeta was really, like, a fucking out-of-left-field unit, and it caught everyone off guard. Um, if we had known that they were going to release a unit that said, hey, if you don't have this unit, you're fucking out of luck for the remainder of the game... Then mm -hmm. obviously we would have saved and <laughs> gotten for him, but a lot of people on JP missed Gogeta because we just had no idea he was about to be as insane that he was that he that he was. Um, on global, it was a different story because once Gogeta came out and everyone's like, "Oh no, I'm saving for Gogeta, everything for Gogeta, everything for Gogeta," and then Gogeta came out and a lot of those people did not get Gogeta. But I feel like it would have been the same regardless of four percent rates uh, versus not because it was just hard to get SSRs in general back in Dokkan in the old days. I definitely feel like, in terms of modern day views, I definitely feel like, no, that, there's no way to spin this. That was fucked up. They shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Yeah. It's not great. It isn't great. And Penta's not here to, to defend himself, so I'll just say, you know what, Penta? You were wrong. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, Penta. It's kind of weird because it's not like it, it, yeah, it is a huge cut down. But at the same time, we don't know what Japan was rocking before then. Like, it felt like Global was kind of on the up and up again. Like, it, right. the rates have been better for Global than it for a long time. That was always the running thing of, like, yo, Japan is the place because no matter what stupid banner we get, we have high rates. Now it's kind of like, eh, depends on the banner. Yeah, Japan has been fluctuating a lot. I mean, for a while, Global was better for, like, three or four banners, wasn't it? When Japan was down to that weird, yeah. like, 5% hole. Yeah, that yeah. sucked. Yeah, yeah, tell me about it. Man, this, the GT <laughs> this banner is crazy came right now. better rates. Was, was up? This is crazy right now, the fucking audio. It, it is. This <laughs> this is the, the way it was meant to be heard was from left and right channels, of course. <laughs> so <laughs> the audio is going a little bit crazy. But if you, if you could not hear what he said, it was, uh... There was a time where the SSR rates were fucking 5%. Mm -hmm. Fuck my life. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's insane. Right? Yeah, I think it's actually the same banner. Didn't they just recycle it? Yes, they did. Except yeah, except it's 3% higher rates. That's insane. <laughs> so yes. true, past Bad uh -huh. echo is weird. Um, yeah. I think it kind of sucks... It, it it sucks for all the people that didn't get them, but at the same time, like, if 
the Gogeta banner and it, and then the next one was immediately way better, like in terms of rates. I would say like that's obviously some shady shit you're throwing, but it feels like all they were doing was keeping on with the same rates as they always were. So nothing. Yeah, really I mean changed. his rates were the same. They they weren't reduced. They were reduced from the Japanese versions' rates of the same banner. Yeah. And obviously we don't have very much data to to check that with is that if that's a consistent trend or not. But uh. I mean, maybe it's because I don't invest as heavily in global as a lot of people do, but I don't necessarily see that as as a shady business tactic as much as unrealistic expectations. Yeah. I've always kind of seen global as the future in which future trunks came back to prevent. So <laughs> Japan lives in the future trunks timeline, and we try and help them. But they live in a different timeline, so nothing gets so better. So everything's changing. So everything's yes. changing up. Okay. It's nice to see that my ability to relate something to something else is still something <laughs> that I do. <laughs> Even back then, I was like, "Oh no, no, it's exactly like this." Um, I guess you. I guess past Zenra does kind of have a point of global. What the rates were the same as global. It's just that people wanted it to be like JP. But yeah, it well, also at the time, like, obviously they're aware of it now, but I don't mm -hmm. think at the time they really put any stock into, like, people are watching the Japanese version of this game, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, yeah. Because when I, when I think shady business practice, I think that, like, the, that the accusation is they they know that people were seeing it in the Japanese version, so they intentionally cut it to, to spite them. Mm -hmm. um, when I think the reality of it was that they just didn't raise it. To, to match which you know you can say that sucks it does gotchas are a shitty business practice in general but yes. like I, I don't think it was a malicious plan from the japanese dev team to get the global version or anything like that no it, it was definitely a case of like they were still under the idea that they were unaware of each other and eventually it changed to where like they became aware that okay yes suddenly we notice a whole lot of foreigners are up in this so it is interesting to think about, but yeah, in the beginning days of Dokkan, there wasn't really a lot of like, oh yeah, we're together, that we know about this. No, we didn't know about each other until they started doing maybe, and I don't think they acknowledged it until they said like, we're going to do a cross campaign, uh, stuff like that. <coughs> ah, excuse me, I'm so sneezy today. Let's continue on. Basically. <laughs> if you see it that way, everything makes perfect sense as to so, why... <laughs> so what you're saying is that Reddit is butterfly-affecting global version, yeah. and it's making the androids stronger, so the rates are not as good. Yes, and now Krillin gets to get married. Well, that's that's one good thing out of the lower Gogeta rates, is Krillin gets to get married. There you go. In ours, Krillin is just dead. And he will stay dead. <laughs> All right, so so I think generally we're <laughs> on the same the page. It kind of seems like to everyone complaining about that understand that there are very different things. That the the games are not the same and the teams are not the same. Yeah, it feels and so like I wouldn't. Yeah, it, it feels like a different game. It feels like it's got a little bit of different direction behind it, and I wouldn't go into like I know the the Reddit mantra is they're both exactly the same. So never speak that they're different ever. But they're very different. Yeah. And, I don't know, like, everyone's determined that every event's going to be exactly the same, and every banner's going to be exactly the same. And I think the sooner that you realize that's not going to be the case, the less frustrated you're going to get when a banner comes out with different rates, or an event never comes out. Like, the One Piece event never came out in Global, did it? It still hasn't. I don't think it ever will. Wait a minute, did, they, did Global never get the One Piece event? No, they, uh, they they did eventually, and it would cut eventually. Yes, yeah. and then they got a better version of it because their shitty buy guys Goku was SSR, and by then you could do the whole leveling up the SA thing. I remember now. Eventually, it did come out. Um. Oh man, talk about miss opportunities. That fucking One Piece collab sucked ass. Yeah, it sure did. It's like, oh man! And if you also want to know what, where, what point of the anime was One Piece on at that time, it was Don Flamenco. That's the dude that they were still it's fighting. It's still stupid that they didn't give you Don Flamingo as a unit. I agree. They should have given you Don Flamenco, and One Piece should have gotten Frieza. 
I yeah, mean, instead it was just it, like you fought him, but then it was just like, oh, it's Goku. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah, it, it was. It, 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 it wasn't it Goku that dies against Cell. Yeah, it was by guys Goku, and they have yeah. never done that art for anything else. One of the most iconic arts of all Dragon Ball, and it's locked behind the fucking One Piece event that you can't get anymore. <laughs> so funny that it ended up being that way and i remember because when they did bring it back on global a lot of people actually wanted it back because they're like we want to get the free sa10 gokus obviously nowadays i don't know if anyone actually does that or there's just so many ways to level up sa's that you don't have to care about like finding a unit with a similar name i assume there's some dudes out there that do but back then it was a huge thing if it was uh, possible to do something like that Let's continue on. Oh, didn't someone post something about, like, they because of the way it is in the global market, they can't get the rights to use the One Piece characters? Oh, that would make sense. I guess, like, we I, I didn't see that post, but I guess we'll know for sure if we ever get that, like, uh, piece, I'm gonna go blow up Cell Goku for free in global. Oh, yeah, they never got that Goku either, did they? Yeah, that was a pretty decent Goku for the time it yeah. came out. That He's was the first uh, SR that had the turtle as passive. In Japan, that's true. He's got a global. That's launch. Yeah, it is actually. Man, that's unfortunate that they they weren't able to get that guy. But I'm gonna guess by the way that they like to throw random free units out, I think they'll be fine. I think they'll get it eventually. Yeah, they'll probably get it as some sort of gift box character at some point. Yeah, definitely. They won't have to fight Feather Boa Man and Chestnut Cracker or whatever those characters from One Piece are. All right. In my defense, that's literally who you fought, and I didn't. I wasn't. <laughs> I'm a big One Piece fan. Just to not get the fraud watch on here, I know his name is now Don Flamenco, and the you did fight the little like um um wooden soldiers from uh from from the from that arc, not the the main dude, the one that got turned into one, but one of just the many wood uh, wood chess guys. As someone who did not know One Piece at the time, it was very fucking confusing <laughs> why we were fighting. Uh, a feathered boa man and uh, someone from the Nutcracker. It, it didn't make a lot of sense to someone who did not know. They could have picked maybe a little bit of a stronger enemy. <laughs> One of the many, uh, the many other villains on Don Flamenco's team. Yeah, I don't, I don't watch or read One Piece, so I have no don't... idea what was going on I think during any of that. It's Don Flamenco and Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairies uh, Nutcracker guy. Oh well, that explained everything. So now yeah. I completely understand what's going on. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. I 100 grasp. He's there. He's there, now. Frieza. That's. Ah. Uh, I think. Because One Piece people fought Frieza, right? Yeah, they fought Frieza. Okay. We fought Feather Boa Man. Yeah, we fought. I was really incensed that they got Frieza and we got Don Flamingo. <laughs> Yeah, you're not happy about it. No, I was talking to some, and I like Don Flamenco as a character after I actually got to read the stuff about him. But it's funny, past Wokey was not having Don Flamenco <laughs> or any of his. Yeah, he, he's pissed. I'm like, whatever. They got one of our most iconic villains, and they gave us fucking Feather Boa Man. <laughs> whatever, he has a point there. That very flamboyantly dressed guy with the shades. Yeah, that's all I knew about him. That's all still I know about him after your explanation. <laughs> I think I do anyway. know more about him. Yeah, continue. <laughs> don't don't drop a slur. Uh, so we kind of <laughs> a pray. I'm, no. Fingers crossed. We did not. We were not those kind of dudes. I'm just saying. I, it's been a very long time since we recorded this. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Very on topically, but we addressed it with the global rates. You know, the, that was the big thing of outrage in Global recently, was that the rates weren't fair, etc., etc. And so now let's switch over to the Japanese outrage. Why don't we talk about how everyone feels about this LR Goku event? Oh man, I'm just farming LR Gokus all my Sundays. I'm not going to church anymore. I'm just staying home. Actually, it's Saturday for when Goku comes out for me, so I don't even go to church either way. Kind of <laughs> sucks. I was not going to church at this time. <laughs> 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 but this is a, a, a sick foreshadowing for the eventual... Something that we will eventually say later on. Uh, back in the day, if you don't know this for Dokkan, it used to be that the LR Prime Battle ones were only open during the weekends. So you could only grind them on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, and they required 777 medals, still. 
man that was, uh, that was quite the time it was an insane i remember though, all the like... excitement for him and then he came out and everyone was like oh this is ass actually <laughs> yeah i think i think we're gonna talk about him here is like so is he actually good and then i think the our, our slow realization is like no and he was the first <laughs> lr in the game yep our first lr and he's bad um but we don't want to acknowledge it we wouldn't know until li- way later uh if we ever do another Moncas re we watch one we should go to the one where they dropped lr super saiyan uh, the first lr banner where it was in gohan in the random fucking banner where everyone was like that's not his banner is it oh god that is his banner <laughs> the night where you almost quit the game one of the very many times where you almost quit the game where you were like uh-huh. fuck this i spent so many stones looking for him i wasn't able to get him and sahal got him on a single multi yep i remember that yep everyone does everyone uh was uh, extremely angry at him for it so let's continue on here <laughs> his grind sucks <laughs> let me cut off free faces yeah no this is like i don't want to say it's bullshit because it's not incredibly unfair of an event. It's bullshit. But they they <laughs> completely switched the style of the game with no warning whatsoever, and it pissed a lot of people, including myself, off. Yeah. <laughs> because this has never been a game where you grind for months and months and months to get your reward. Like, you pull a unit that's a Dokkan Fest unit, you fight the dude ten times, you have what you want. Yeah. I guess now it's 11 with Vegito and the new Broly. They take 11 wins, which, whatever. You know, you do that in a couple days. Yeah, that's easy. With that's that time, manageable. Yeah, that's fine. Do you remember when it took a couple days to get dudes <laughs> to yep. actual full do- to, to Dokkan Awaken them? Uh, the reason we're saying this is because this is before times 2 and before there was ever stamina items. So you had to go off of raw fucking... Either you were using a stone to get your health back, to get your stamina back... Or you were just waiting. Those are the only ways you could play Dokkan back then. Um, man, that's fucking crazy. I forgot about that completely. Without using stones on Goku, what did it end up being? Something like three to four months of playing him with all of your stamina when he comes out without refilling before you can get him? Just enough time to wait for the second LR to come out. Yeah, exactly. Just enough time for him to not matter anymore. <laughs> So, I mean, I used a bunch of stones. I know a bunch of people use stones to get him already. And he's good. He's a good card. Yeah, he's really solid. He's you were not, in denial for all the stones you I don't think he's good enough used. to justify a four-month grind <laughs> for him. I guess if you're free, if you're not using any stones at all, and you're just like, if you have like nothing to do on a Sunday, there's no events, and you're just like, yeah, whatever, I'll go in and fight Goku for as many times as I need. It's and, like the insane amount of preparation that had to go into getting ready for that event. Because, I mean, they said, oh, you know, you need these super strikes, but there's like six or seven total that you can actually bring that are any good. So and, if you pick and, the wrong yeah. ones while you were farming, I guess just <laughs> hit. If you were one of the many people that were like, Android 16, I'll never need him. Yeah, bad call, because he's the only one that matters. King. So if if you don't know, back then only super strike characters could do the grind. That was another reason why this was an insufferable grind. <laughs> it's cause, oh yeah, because it was only good guys. Yeah, it was only like you could only use like mercenary Tau, who was rebirthed. The Android sixteen that I mentioned here. Um, those were all like what did we call them back then? They don't do them anymore, obviously. But that was where like Piccolo Junior came from. The only two that never got a Dokkan to Awaken, which was Piccolo Junior and um, Keep It Okai. Keep it okay. um, you were supposed to grind those and then use them for this event, uh, probably because they didn't want you to just beat it with Gogeta. So they forced you to use someone that was not Gogeta. Yeah, the the dog shit trash units. Yes, and so if you didn't do that grind, you weren't allowed to fight them. Because we didn't know that it was going to be locked to only those units. We thought that they would just have like a bonus or something. We didn't know that they would be like, actually now make a, make a team out of those seven random ass characters. <laughs> Because who does that? Right, Lucifer? That's why my cat currently meowing at me. He's like, I can't believe that Dokkan would do that at some point. They're completely correct. Yeah, eventually they did remove that limit. Um, 
eventually they got rid of a lot of the limits on here, like the fact that you can only do it for a week. Like we said here, three to four months if you were trying to do it without spending stones is fucking insane for LR Super Saiyan Goku. Absolutely crazy. Yep. Lucifer, leave me alone. We're talking about Dokkan right now. Okay. <laughs> Go. Vegeta, whatever. I'll use King Cold. Same king. <laughs> Both royalty, one stronger. Obviously, it's the right answer. Yeah, one has uh, also a Also bad call. Also bad call. You needed... You need, like, more than one in unit. And the worst thing is, is that there's another... First of all, Mecha Frieza sucks because not not Mecha Frieza sucks. Let me just say it sucks that he's physical when he should yeah, be intelligent. <laughs> that was a yeah. dick move. Huge dick move <laughs> to take one more unit that you could block with away from you. At Huge that, dick move. At that point, just should have made chill. That's right. This fight was also not easy. You could lose it and lose twenty mm-hmm. stamina <laughs> and your entire mm-hmm. run for it. Oh my god. Yeah, the 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 people nowadays have it so fucking easy with their like whatever three times a day, but it costs no stamina. And then you just go in. You didn't live during the real hardness of an event where not only did you grind, you then uh would do a difficult fight and then were rewarded with five medals when it could have been twenty or more and when you needed seven hundred and seventy seven of them. What a different time! The super strike, just like yeah. And then, of course, they give you Vegeta and Pycon, so that we have two of every color, but they evaporate in one hit, so you can't even bring them. Will I say So Pecon? why did they give them out? I bet you will. Uh, let's find why out. wouldn't you wait until after the tech event came? Maybe this was all their plan. Maybe they're just kind of like, <laughs> it would have been too obvious if they would not have used any Agile at all. I guess, but I mean, God... Because they're both... I mean, I guess you could kind of maybe bring Vegeta because he makes King Vegeta stronger, but no. And Pycon is just a nightmare, so no. no. And, like, you can't bring Future Trunks, really, because like, it doesn't do anything. It's like the Green Goblin mask. I've actually I say been Pecon. wanting to try <laughs> using him just because his passive gives some attack and defense, but I think it's, like, literally me realizing that's irrational and he probably won't do anything. But like yeah, it's I, only like fifteen percent, right? It, yeah, it's not. It's it's fifteen attack and defense, and I figure like when you combine it all, it should help a little bit. But it's still not enough. You lose like yeah, a, okay. a you lose a link skill, which sucks. Yeah, and who? I mean, who are you taking him over? Because Mecha Frieza and King Cold both lower his attack. And the uh, Mecha Frieza at least SA is at nine. Yeah, and he links with Tao, who you're always bringing. So. Hoping for those stuns, praying for the stuns that you that you never get, but when you do get it, it's nice. That's true. Yeah, that event. If that's the event for all future LRs, it's gonna be a real. Oh pain. god. Uh, they still have this fucking setup, by the way. LR Bio Broly just released as a prime battle, and I'm pretty sure he's 777 medals. <laughs> they are still doing this, even if the grind is easier. I still can't believe that they're fucking still making dudes like this. That is crazy, dude. It is 100% insane to be like, I, I can't believe that they're actually legitimately still doing things like this. <laughs> I was like, surely they have to change at some point. No. They don't. Oh, uh, I know. Because it has they have like this expectation on that event, I feel like, that you should be grinding twenty four seven to get these items. Because I mean you need what? It's like two hundred ghost ushers. And like I mean, I can beat him consistently, it's not a problem. Most people can now. Skill issue. But can you beat him consistently <laughs> with the item setups that you have a hundred and ten times? Man, I remember when the community used to be like, let's use our items smartly and it wasn't just like YouTuber bait to be like, oh, itemless run item is evil yeah yeah sad i don't know where it's it this is before that this is before the evil took place i don't want to blame youtubers but i'm almost positive it came from youtubers it was a lot of it was youtubers yeah yeah they were they were the ones who started calling things itemless so people started saying so can you do this itemless because it's like that's impressive not knowing that you're supposed to use your fucking items the the only (laughs) fights that are designated that you don't use your items are the ones that literally say no, don't use items. Those are designed so you don't use the fucking items. So anger-inducing that that is still something that is in the Dokkan community. It's probably not as pronounced as it was, but there was a, a years there where it was like people stopped using them and would talk down for you for using them. And I'm like, are you stupid? 
you're supposed to. Otherwise, what are they doing? Am I supposed to? Am I collecting 200 ghost users for my fucking health? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Like, yeah, that's imagine, imagine for a minute, just even the the easiest Dokkan Fest ever. Who even is the easiest one now? Boo, Janemba, Broly, Broly. Uh, The first form Broly, not the new one. The new one's actually pretty tough. The old, the old one, the SDR one. Yeah, the original. Yeah. yeah. Now imagine doing that a hundred and ten. Oh yeah, sells pretty easy too. Actually, that's true. Yeah. But yeah, now now expand that out to a hundred and ten times. Actually, that would even still be easier because you can easily beat those guys with no items because you can use units that are good. Yeah. Yeah, but imagine oh, yeah. cards that do stuff. Okay, imagine doing the cell event, but you were only allowed to use soul versus soul units. <laughs> Super Vegeta would be good, finally. But he was good on my uh, agility team I used against cell. You had Vegito though. It's not the same thing. Whatever. It counts. <laughs> Vegito's here to lift up all units. Just every every agility unit, it doesn't matter. This is on a couple days after Super Vegito release, and we are definitely feeling the Super Vegito high in this video. Um, if you don't know, back in the day, people were so convinced that Gogeta was still the best unit, they did not acknowledge that Super Vegito was Oh the yeah, unit. no, they, yeah, they no. were not... No. They did not acknowledge the tribal chief. <laughs> it, was, it was rough back then. It was. So, the way that we did it, which is something that we had to legitimately do, is that they would say, well, whatever, you would never use, um... Uh, you would never use an all agility team to take down Tech Beerus, and that was seen as the the checkmate because back then Beerus was one of the hardest Dokkan fests because he required specifically a Whis or Super Saiyan God Goku to take him down. And so what I did is that when I saw that comment, I immediately loaded up my Super Vegitos. got my AGL Super Saiyan God Goku and the free to play Whis, which was not good. And I said, I'm going to beat it using these units. And I did. And I posted it. And it was like one of the few times where I felt like, checkmate atheists. <laughs> <laughs> we you got had, him. Yeah, we got him. And the idea was is that we had to convince them that Rainbow Meta was dead. And it was tough because it was a lot of global players, I feel like, who were just, who just got Gogeta. And we're just now being... They were dealing with the fact that not only did we have Gogeta, his rates were lowered, but we finally have him. We have what Japan has. And then we come in from Japan and say, actually, not the not the, not the the new hotness no more. Super, uh, Super Vegito. He's the way to go. He's the god lead. He's the beginning of what you would eventually call the god leads, which would be the... I don't think we call him then back then. I forget when it started. I want to say it was with the introduction of go tanks but you would eventually coin the term god leads because they are the five they were basically like the five gods um and eventually people were waiting for the rainbow version of the god lead and he would never come he he would come in the form of a Rayleigh when she was given the god lead yep. uh mm -hmm. And that was the ultimate um, victory lap for me as the number one Aureli stan, as everyone the was talking. The ultimate Aureli fan? Yep, as everyone was talking shit on her, and I said, I feel like the physical one is going to on Awaken. No one believed in me. You didn't believe in me when we recorded that episode where I said that. And then that came out, and she was made the god lead, and everyone literally despaired. But it was me going, fuck yeah. <laughs> it was a... Uh, an amazing time. We should be... It was your, your moment. It was definitely my moment. It was my time to... It was my John Cena holds up the belt at ECW one night stand as I walk in <laughs> with my rainbow Aureli and go like, fuck all of you. Fuck the haters. But yeah, that is the current mood in here. So we're definitely on a Super Vegito positive one here. And we, we came into this episode with the idea we're pushing our boy. We're cutting, we're, we're cutting into the darkness, and we're letting it be known, this guy is legit, and we'll get into that later in the episode, I want to say, but it's a good thing to remember, this is what is the current history behind this moment. You're good like, now. Ninja Murasaki, <laughs> greatest unit in the game. Hell yeah! Did I tell you that someone, someone PM'd me yesterday, asking why Ninja Murasaki was on the SSR tier list? <laughs> <laughs> 
we put Ninja Murasaki on the SSR too. <laughs> we did. We sure did. Unfortunately, it would eventually be the thing that killed the 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 the, the, the SSR list for a long time, because then people were like, "Well, you should put General Blue on there. He has a seventy five percent stun rate," and it eventually killed it because eventually we did have to put other SRs on it, and not just Ninja Murasaki. But oh my god, to really sell the idea of how good he is. Our Ninja Murasaki is now on the same level as so many of the SSRs because he gives something that no other unit does, which is Super Seal. And the one weakness of Super Vegito was that if they super you, you're going to take a lot of damage because he doesn't counter it. But now we seal that away. So now it's just unlimited counters, baby. <laughs> Let's hear more about this Ninja Murasaki, I assume. <laughs> I was so well, someone finally noticed. I, just, I, I was surprised that nobody noticed that I had actually added him to the list. But yeah, was... he went a little while without getting picked out, but someone finally found him down there. <laughs> but why is he only in B tier? Exactly, he should be God tier. We'll just wait till next year. We have to slowly do it. Like next time. That's Unfortunately, true. now someone knows. The original plan was to just, over time, slowly put him higher and higher. <laughs> See how high he can get before someone found him. It's like he made like an o his own tier, like Murasaki tier, above God tier. <laughs> uh, that would be that would be fantastic. Sadly, we got found out already. That's a shame. He's staying on B yeah. tier though. Until, oh, that's, that's fine. He can stay on B tier. <laughs> until another Agile, uh, um, I forget the name. Super Spre Sealer? Super Sealer comes out, yeah. He still is pretty viable. He's actually on my main team. Yeah, so. I mean, I just use Gotenks, but... I don't have people Gotenks. people who don't have Gotenks, you can use Ninja Murasaki. You're talking also specifically physical Gotenks. The unit that the dev said we can't give a Awakening to because he'll destroy the balance of the game. A real Dokkan developer in Japan went on stage and said that to a crowd of Dokkan fans. <laughs> Amazing. Beautiful time we used to live in. And I actually recently pulled Bardock, and I looked at Bardock, and I looked at Murasaki, and I kept Murasaki in the team. <laughs> <laughs> That's another, that's another thing that we can squeeze in real quick. Um, it's not on the schedule, but that's okay. We're going off script. Remember when you used to make schedules uh, in? How do you guys well, feel about what? Remember when you used skills. to make schedules for stuff? <laughs> yeah, not anymore. Not no more. We're freewheeling it now, baby, <laughs> for the most part. Our plan is a, a blank piece of paper that says, uh, talk. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and we figure it out as we go along. We speak from the heart. That's what I like to say. Exactly. That are now where that rainbow is not the best anymore. See, look, that pause in you, you feared for your life as you said, if I say <laughs> this out right now, they're gonna kill me. But no, you said, no, I ha this has to be said. Rainbow is no longer the best. It's good. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think it's really, really good for the game. Like, for the actual health of the game and its survivability, to not have the entire game based around one card is so much better. Yeah, definitely. I like that. The only thing that's bad right now for me is that I still have a lot of Gogeta friends. So, <laughs> like, I have to get these pores off my list. <laughs> Where, why are you not running Super Vegeta? That's Gunther. That's right. this. Gunther goes up to his friends list and says, Why are you poor? <laughs> get the why are you poor? Why are you using Gogeta? Why are you poor? Go to the new to hope That's that there's a Super Vegito out there somewhere. Obviously, as the game gets more and more, they'll be more like it, but uh, it's cool. Uh, I've been using oh, Rainbow oh, oh. since... Also, imagine having problems with the friends list eight years back, and then learning that they still have not fixed the fucking friends list system at all, and it's the same shitty system that they've had since <laughs> almost eight years back when I said, man, it sure is hard to find a Super Vegito lead when there's barely anyone here. <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> Since Gogeta was released. <laughs> because why wouldn't you? There's no reason not to. No. He was th he was better than the mono leaders that had the same skill in him. He's better than everything. Yeah, he's and he's still a beast for sure, but I like the oh, idea yeah. of like being able to just fully roll in with a full team of dudes. And it makes up for some interesting like um 
team compositions. Like, you can actually now build a full Shocking Speed Agile team as long as you got Super Vegeta on the front and just try that out. Yeah. And I mean, eventually, because I imagine we're going to get more of these, unless they're like, oh my god, this is too good, <laughs> we have to stop. That we're going to get the rest of these leaders, too. So that's going to be at least six teams, because Rainbow is still viable. It's not, like, useless. It's still a good team. Oh, yeah, for sure. But before, it was the only team, whereas now it's just a team that you can bring. Yes. So we'll get at least, we'll have, like, six possible teams that you can take. You'll have one for every color, and we'll have a Rainbow team that all have their ups and downs to them, whatever. But, God, before these two cards came out, you couldn't even argue for anything other than Gogeta at all. It was uh, the only thing you could argue for was to use uh, any of them that were plus three if you had no Gogeta. But regardless of sure. anything, you were still running a rainbow. And even like when people would say, "Oh, well, you know, it's better to bring full monocolor teams because you have to block these bosses," but you'd still the Gogeta would still be the leader of it. <laughs> so it didn't matter yeah. because he still did more damage than your friggin' mono lead did. That's actually the sad thing of what I was looking for teams just to have fun with. I was like, oh, I'm going to have an all DB focused team. Obviously, the leader will be Gogeta. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's favorite Dragon Ball character, Gogeta. Like seven years later, they eventually did release a lead that let you play with an all Dragon Ball team, by the way. It did take a very long time for them to, <laughs> to, to do something about it. I actually think it was probably Kid Goku was the Ant one that was the original one, but there wasn't enough Dragon Ball characters, but then eventually they did more of it. But still funny to think about, like, yeah, it, uh, still not viable, actually, funny enough. <laughs> you can't run an all Dragon Ball team and have a good time in Dokkan. It was in 23 seconds of screen time, maybe less. <laughs> Everyone's favorite. Everyone's favorite. He only had 30 minutes. He didn't have time. He was like, chop, chop, this movie needs to wrap up. We gotta get this up. shit done. We gotta go on. Yeah. Yeah. This movie's long enough as it is. Goten and Trunks have been fighting Hitler for like 35 minutes. We need to stop. Pecan screamed <laughs> at a building. There, there it is. is. There it is. Pecan. Pecan. Chekhov's Pecan. Check you always reduce it if it doesn't happen. <laughs> it 100% happens. Uh, where it's, uh, they ignore all the Hitler stuff. And Dragon Ball Fusion is a hell of a movie as well. <laughs> it is. It's one of them. <laughs> oh, God. You know, everyone really praises that movie until you... Uh, and it's a good movie. It is. But then good. when you really break it down, it's ridiculous. It's silly. <laughs> the stupidest thing. It's amazing. Like, uh, Janemba's weakness is, like, being rude to him. Yeah, he just shows up. He's like, no, nah, I got this, Goku. And then he just starts insulting him. And yeah, and his, like, chest starts exploding. And it's... <laughs> oh, it's great. It's... My question is, why did he stop? Why did he stop insulting him? Yeah. He got like he got like face Punched. squished. That was how Janemba attacked him with. He just started squishing his face. Turns out people don't what? like it when you talk shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then, fun fact, it's so true. So it's true. so true. It's so true, Basil. They don't like it. <laughs> they don't like it. <laughs> they don't like it at all, man. Not at all. They reused the exact same weakness for the next movie. Really? Yeah, that was Wrath of the Dragon, wasn't it? Wasn't that the following movie? Or was it Bio Broly, then Wrath of the Dragon? It might have... I want to say Bio Broly came before Wrath of the Dragon. Either way, I, Wrath of the Dragon is the last one. I know that. Yeah, Either way, the friggin' Harutagarn's weakness was being mean to him again. <laughs> For some reason, if you're mean to him, he can't turn into smoke. And that is how Goku killed him. I should have known better than to question your knowledge on this because you were the literal encyclopedia when anyone anyone needed a like lore question on Dragon Ball back in the day. It was literally like, let me just ask Zen, and then you just had the answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I know yeah. things. Yeah, you did. I should have never have, uh, have doubted you on that one. I'm, I'm here in the future going like, you should just listen to him. If he says it's that, then it's that. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't try and fight this one. You are losing this battle. Just further proof that all you need to really do is be a bully, and you'll get ahead of Yeah, life. if you want to... <laughs> I don't believe that. The views of past Wokey are not the views of current Wokey. <laughs> Feed in life, just be a dick, and then your other your enemies can't react. And then they can't do anything. <laughs> then summon a dragon with your fist. <laughs> and then it's fine. And then that's how you deal with bullies at school. That's how I dealt with them. 
<laughs> that's exactly what you should do. Anyone who's looking for advice, that's I'm glad we could help you. Yeah, there you go. Dragon fist them. <laughs> we are not advocating for violence, by the way. Fi- find another way. Or maybe do finally <laughs> find them back, actually. It depends. <laughs> Basically, check to see if... Uh, check to see who they follow on Twitter, and then based off of who they follow, either assault them or find someone else, depending on that. <laughs> maybe not with that phrasing, but... Yeah. Vegito's really good. <laughs> <laughs> he is really good. He's so much fun. Like, I, when he came out, I was like, oh, no, he obviously has his weaknesses and stuff. And then you use a double team, and it's literally, like, the most eye-awakening thing ever. You're just like, oh, I can I can do anything. I can make yeah, any I'm team. Yeah, I'm a god. Like, I'm unstoppable. I'm gonna put the but... worst dudes in here. Won't yeah, matter. subreddit, ever since he came out, has been just a roller coaster of oh my god he can do that <laughs> like every day there was something new because yeah. at first it was well you know he can't he can't beat any tech bosses so it's fine and then cell happened and everyone was like well you know cell's old so you know whatever yeah, anyway. and then beers happened and then everyone was like well I'm not gonna respond to that <laughs> because <laughs> Gogeta can do it faster yeah that Gogeta can do it faster and then you know. And that's true. They're technically not wrong that Gogeta yeah. is faster in two fights in the game. It's but more like, of the satisfaction of I'm beating you slowly with this and I want you to know that I want this game to feel hurt. <laughs> I don't yeah, feel... I'm not, <laughs> do I'm not beating bleed? you quickly, but I'm also using Pintar, so... <laughs> that's right. Who the that's fuck right. is Pintar? Oh, man. And Broly's good too. I just don't Pintar, have Pintar. Isn't Pintar Broly, the, the I mean, um, It's uh yeah, it's the the Indian guy from the World Tournament, the really 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 uh, oh, heavy guy. Oh my god. Yeah, that's Pintar. Oh fuck! You're right. This guy. That was an insane uh-huh. pull up. That's crazy. <laughs> This was truly the power of Super Vegito. Is that you were saying? Nah, Pintar got this. This man who says when he delivers the final blow, attack up 25% in the next attack. So that means that the fight is over and then he gets 25% attack. Absolutely worthless. Damn, I did not remember his name. Alright, go back in here. Holy teams are in some ways better. Yeah, they got a lot of power behind them. They have way more offense, they just don't have the same defense that AGL teams have. Well, I won't say they have way more offense, because that's not true. Because Vegito alone, if it if it lines up right, does like 1.5 million in a turn, which is ridiculous. Plus that Super Saiyan God. Yep. And but uh, they have their, their offense is easier. Because, I mean, every good physical unit all of a sudden has ready for war and is a Super Saiyan. Just every single one of them. Yeah. So you can just slap them all on a team and everyone dies. That's true. Man. Yeah, I'm glad for these new leader skills. I'm interested to see what the next one will come out. And which units will have them. Because giving them to... Giving it to Broly is a really weird move. Because I kind of considered that we were all just going to move on and forget about Broly. And now that's, you know, Trunks and... I could not be more wrong. It turned out that Dragon Ball Super was planning on bringing back Broly this entire time. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Failed prediction. 100%. Sometimes I get it right, but I was 100% wrong with the idea that everyone was ready to move away from Broly. It turns out the answer is they want more Broly. (laughs) Everybody, yeah, Broly is forever. Broly forever. 1,000 years of darkness, 1,000 years of fucking Broly never ending. Bio Broly now in Dokkan. Go check him out with the Broly celebration going on. Uh, Majin <laughs> Vegeta did what he does, but better. Not anymore. We're back to Broly. Back to the Broly team. Damn. Oh, the other thing to remember is that this was a really weird banner because Super Vegito and Physical Broly, the two god leads, were on the same fucking banner for some reason. And they never uh-huh. did this again. Um... It would be like, I guess the equivalent would be like if they released Super Saiyan, LR Super Saiyan for Gogeta and LR Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta, and they were on the same banner, and it would be like, wait, wait, wait a minute, why isn't there like two banners here? It was really weird. They never did that again. Uh, I believe Gogeta's was the same way. Gogeta and Inchinemba were on the exact same banner, and they were both uh, Dokkan Fests. 
I guess they eventually learned their lesson of we shouldn't have that. We shouldn't have good banners. I don't know why they stopped doing <laughs> it. Yeah, they just they realized that having good banners uh, is bad for the bottom line. It's true. They did, and they never did it again. But it was it was something. As years on, we would say like, why don't they do this anymore? It was really weird. Damn it, Broly! We never even got our Bio Broly card yet. It's a real missed opportunity. One day, <laughs> someday. We got the, the Goten and Trunks SSRs are the Bio Broly art, so, you know, foreshadowing maybe? Maybe. They'll also have to probably release an Android 18 that isn't evil. They still haven't done that. Well, half of her, I can't tell the difference between which ones are future 18 and which ones aren't anymore. By the way, they've never released a banner Bio Broly. I'm pretty sure all of them have been free to play. There That's been... reasonable, I think. It is. They did eventually. They did eventually release a good Android 18 in terms of um, the loving wife one, as opposed to the killer robot one. Because I can't read them, obviously. Oh yeah, I think but... it, I think the way they say it is whether or not it says future on it or not. But unfortunately, yeah, all of it they look Japanese. exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> well, they are the same person. Well, I guess so. Yeah. But yeah. Can we get an Android 18 that's not in her like? jeans skirt and jean jacket so that we can tell that she's a good guy now that's the only way to tell that actually is the only way to tell well, uh, well actually she was evil without that for a little while too yeah and then we can get park ranger android 17 <laughs> yeah but then we'll get super 17 which maybe we can just skip that one shout out to super 17 not being at sparking zero by the way <laughs> <laughs> as it is uh then isn't it Hellfighter 17? With his weird, like, yeah. Super Saiyan 3 eyebrows? And he, yeah, well, isn't Hellfighter 17 the one in the trench coat that fuses yeah, with regular 17? With yeah, yeah, that's right, and then they make Super 17. Uh, I'm bullshitting here because I have not actually seen this arc at all. <laughs> I'm uh, the, This current Wilkie is, is, just lying. Going, is lying through his teeth because this is before I did my GT rewatch and I talked about it on the modcast. Um, because originally I didn't actually see all of GT. I only saw a couple episodes, but not the full thing. So I started watching the full thing, and then that's what led down to my breakdown as I yelled about the Super 17 arc, about how unbelievably shitty it was, about how... <laughs> what, what was it? It's like every, the entire world's going to shit, and then Goku goes to hell, and then a raccoon shows up and says, Let's play a gourd game, Goku! <laughs> and... <laughs> And I was so unbelievably angry. And I said, why? Why are we having filler in the middle of this fucking arc as Super 17 is getting ready to kill people? Uh, so yeah, I'm 100% I'm bullshitting for the entire thing here. I like, the, Which is, I like the name Hellfighter 17. Still a very good name. Yeah, in, in theory. <laughs> until... In theory, everything's cool until you turn into the android Super Saiyan 3 guy who has those, like, power absorby things on his hands yeah because they felt like that was the plot device from Dragon Ball that Z that needed to come back the, the, the two enemies that had that that died immediately that's GT summed up god it really is GT is like a mass of really kind of neat ideas with just the worst execution possible to the point that it just becomes a joke tell them yeah. it also looks kind of <laughs> nice Super 17 doesn't. No, he doesn't. But I'm talking about our <laughs> lives in general. <laughs> yeah, some of it does. You were giving GT no quarter in that one. You had some no, shit to say. No, no, I was not a fan. I, I still think that... I, I, I do think that the actual art style of GT is good. It's just that everything around GT is not, not very good. This is also before you had your um, acceptance of Super Saiyan 4 Goku as well. I think eventually you came around to being like, you know what, Super Saiyan 4 Goku, he's okay. But back then, you were definitely anti Super Saiyan 4 Goku. I don't remember when it, when it changed in you, but it does change eventually. <laughs> does some of it? I, I like some of it. I dislike most of it, but I like some of the art. Yeah, probably not character designs, but in terms of the actual look, I think it actually looks pretty decent. Yeah, character I mean, Super Saiyan 4 there. looks good. Uh, the only thing I like about GT. Uh, talk to him. <laughs> it it is a thing that exists. I will say that. Yeah, it's powerful. I I want to see how the game adds them because that will be really Super, interesting. 
Super yeah, Saiyan 4 Gogeta gets the OP Rainbow Leader skill now. <laughs> he actually yeah, gets like Super Vegito's uh, thing, but for all rainbows, and then we start the cycle again. <laughs> then we start about six more months of Gogeta being the only card that matters. Yeah, six more months. So funny enough, he did actually get the first category lead. And he did usher in like the current meta of what Dokkan is now, is that he was the first fusion um the lead when we eventually did get super saiyan 4 gogeta it's funny to think about like oh yeah th there was that's where we also get uh to be released from when global <laughs> released them early without the leader skill <laughs> mm -hmm. with no fucking leader skill oh man beautiful times just when the gopher pokes his head out that means jo gogeta's the leader for the next six months <laughs> he saw his shadow so that's three more months of gogeta <laughs> God, that rock band mic is. You know, I kind of wonder, like, yeah, it's it's fighting. So you, we're man. we're moving into Dragon Ball Super for the first time in yeah, the game, and cool. we've already had a decent amount of GT. I'm How holding it the do we still not have too. Super Saiyan three Go Tanks yet? He's a myth, apparently. It really doesn't exist. <laughs> like after a while, I'm starting like, what what is the release schedule for this? Like we have, like Staff Officer Black from Dragon Ball <laughs> is in the game. <laughs> He... Why are you pointing out him specifically, Zen? What's wrong with Staff <laughs> Officer Black? <laughs> uh, you're course, you are correct, but it is funny now, now in retrospect. I think Gotenks was literally the next unit up after this. Um, it was like, it was not Gotenks specifically. It was like Gotenks and Bootanks. It was Bootanks first, and then it was uh, Gotenks, if I remember correctly, the way the leads go. Yes, because Omega Shenron was the last one released. Funny how that worked out. So we don't have, <laughs> and we are getting the other black too. Yeah, he's coming in the. Uh, he, well, he's probably just a boss. Hopefully, I hope he's Let's a boss. A I think I hope he's a boss. I, I I love this card, but it should be noted: we don't have Super Saiyan three Go Tanks. We do have Bumblebee Pan. Which... Yeah, for God's sake, <laughs> we have B Pan. <laughs> uh, we don't have a card. We don't have Buhan or Go Tanks. No. A card that I wanted and never thought would actually be in the game because why would you do that? We have, but the card that is obvious is still not available. Yeah, like, it's not like Gotenks isn't popular either. Like, a lot of people like Gotenks. Oh, but And he's Super Saiyan 3 in Super also. Like, he's Super Saiyan 3 in everything that he's in. Yeah. That's like his thing. <laughs> he's still not out yet. It's weird. That's also like when they released, um, Boo Tanks. And it was the most like, oh, he's an SR. Oh, he's an SR in the same banner as Ultimate Gohan and Gotenks. It wasn't Bootanks, it was Buhan. It was Bu into Buhan and then the Super Saiyan 3 tech. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. That's what it is. I'm, I'm misremembering. Why, why would you do this? <laughs> I'm still holding out hope it's because he's going to get the Beerus treatment in, uh, in a Buhan. Don't confess. That's that's all I'm clinging to now. That's all I've yeah, got. Yeah, that would make sense. So like after after the Beerus event came up and like he, that card got a joke on, I was like, okay, this has to be their case for him, because if it's not, that's... you guys really fucked uh, fucked us pretty bad on this one. Yeah, the skinny gray boo. What is it? Evil boo. Yeah, evil he boo. got one. He's an SSR. Yeah, and and Boo Tanks isn't. B Pan is an SSR. <laughs> B Pan is an SSR. <laughs> B Pan is also an LR, and Kid Buu is still waiting to get an LR. By the way, <laughs> is it the this problem with that Dokkan had all those years ago is still not fixed? <laughs> Where certain years? That's crazy. It is. It's it's actually crazier to think about. Like, oh yeah, Bio Broly. If it's a running joke at this point, I still remember that when Truth sent out that tweet. I want to say almost four years ago, where he said. Oh my god, everyone expecting LR Kid Buu. He's obviously happening at some point. You just need to wait. It's still not it's not happened, and it's always been really funny to me that it still has not happened. Uh <laughs> not only is she an SSR, but she's technically a farmable SSR because she's in all those missions. Yeah, she so is. So you can get her SA ten. We the got... new metagame, B Pan metagame. Yeah. The new the new metagame, the one I've been wanting for. <laughs> Uh, we also got freaking, um, what's his name? Silent but Deadly. What's the guy from Bardock's team? Borgos. Oh, uh, Borgos, the guy who has no lines in this hey. show ever? Yes, the one whose quote is like dot dot dot. 
Yeah, the only he got lines in the dub, but in the original he has no lines. He doesn't even speak, and he's an SSR. Yes, which I'm happy for, but still, that still kind of stands the reason. What is SSR? What's not? It's all. Yeah, what's the plan behind any of this? Raditz Do they not want to make any apes that weren't SSR? Because it's not like ape mechanic is good. Still isn't. That's true. Ape mechanic could be way better. That's another is thing. So I, we're bad. spiraling we're wildly. We have like no structure to this episode, but no, it's the first but one. It's, so it's the first one. It's all right. Next one yeah. will be better. We swear. The next episode was in fact one of the worst episodes if I ever remember correctly. <laughs> 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 we really didn't learn anything from this. And then uh, the, uh, speaking of, we're 33 minutes in here, and it's also getting a little bit late. So I think we'll probably uh, continue off the rest of this for another for another time as we do another revisit. I ended up getting lost in talking about the past year, so we'll just finish this episode at a later time, and we're good for right here at 33:20. Um, cause we, yeah, we still have a, a lot of this episode to go through, but we should be able to finish it in the next time we have time to record something. Um, so thank you, Zen, for joining me with me. You're going to be here for when we finish this off next time, of course. Oh, absolutely. How do you feel like walking this down memory lane? The, yeah, I was about to say, this is quite the, uh, journey down memory lane here. Yeah. Do you remember any of the things that you talked about here? Not really. No, not, not, absolutely nothing. Uh, I'm the same way. I only really remember, like, key pieces. Like, I remember Ninja Murasaki, and I remember us being very, like, nervous, and I remember that it had a left and right um, weird way of saying it um, when it launched, but that's basically it. Uh, I also remember the episode after this being an extremely terrible episode, which is one of the episodes that um, featured Kole in it. And, uh, Cole is yeah, responsible. Yeah, Cole, Cole's first episode was a clusterfuck. It, it was. It was, uh, we love Cole, of course, but Bro was not, uh, was under 18 at the time, and it showed in the way he talked. <laughs> it was a very kid-like thing. And this is this, uh, the same is true for, I want to say, Toast as well. Toaster of Fun. We had a couple people mm-hmm. on here. Oh, man, what a fun time. But yeah, we will come back and finish off the rest of this later. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, we're going to keep doing it regardless of anything. But if, if anything, this is at least Dokkan content that people have uh, who actually sub to my channel for Dokkan stuff have not gotten in years. <laughs> so I'll consider this a, a win for them. But we'll be back to finish this off for later. Um, so I guess until until next time, Zen, why don't you say goodbye? Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. We still have not gotten better at ending shows, by the way. Nope. That hasn't changed. We haven't gotten better at starting them or ending them or doing them. <laughs> eight years, baby. Veterans yeah. at this point. <laughs> eight, eight years down the drain for nothing. Exactly. Boom. Later.